Hello YouTube, this is the Copernicus, and you are watching my Let's Play of Tech World 2. And I am going to fight a wither. I don't just want to fight it, I want to destroy it. So I made a, even though I have this beastly sword here, I made some uh, Strength 2 and Regen 2 potions. So here goes the Strength 2. I'm going to do that right away. And I'm going to drink this right before he... Gets to full health. I honestly don't know how this fight's gonna go. Oh shit. Okay, I destroyed him. And I got two division sigils and another star. Alright, so I'm going to go back to the base and show you guys what I've been doing since last episode. So I'll meet you back there. Whoa, hello guys. Let me take care of this real quick. Oh my. <laughs> what an explosive start. No. Oh, I do not have time to hear the good word. I said I don't have time! Oh. My goodness. Okay, so guys, um, I can't remember if I, got, if I showed you this already, but um, when I was doing the, uh, in, or the ritual to activate my Division Sigil, as you may or may not know, Cursed Earth spawns around it. I think I showed you guys the Cursed Earth, but I don't think I showed you this. I came back, um, and before it all had burned up, uh, it turned night again, and um, Cursed Earth burns with uh, daylight, so um, I didn't even think about using it. I think I mentioned, oh, it'd be cool to maybe do a little spawner or something with Cursed Earth, and you know what? I thought that what maybe it wasn't such a bad idea now. So, um... What I did initially, this was a while ago, I just encased a big area on cobblestone and made it completely dark so the cursed earth could flourish. I lit it up a little bit so you guys could see um, all cursed earth in there. I did a little bit of harvesting. I made my uh, myself a silk touch shovel to get some cursed earth. And then, oh, leave the jetpack on. And then I made this little hut over here. Ooh, getting some frame rate issues for some reason or another. Sorry about that. Um, anywho, I made uh, this little thing here inside of there. Um, apparently it's enough for a spider to spawn, but nothing else. Uh, and then, since there's half slabs here, it's completely dark in there. So this cursed earth is currently spreading. And I'll just harvest it every once in a while and replace it with dirt so that uh, it keeps spreading. So I'm going to use this cursed earth. I think I have a bit more there, yeah. Um... I think I'm going to use this, and I was trying to think of, you know, what would be good for a mob spawner, and why don't I have any energy? I do have energy. Oh, it was off. Um, if I thought, you know, skeleton, eh, maybe. Wither skeleton, I eh, don't really want to go to the nether for that, to collect my stuff and whatnot. So I thought, you know, maybe Cursed Earth, because that, I mean, it does spawn spawn supercharged mobs and whatnot. I think, I know they have speed, I'm not sure if they have resist. Either way, not really a problem, because I decided to use turtles. So here we have uh, Jabby and Pokey, and those guys are going to be um, killing all the mobs because I tested um, uh, pretty much everything else I tested uh, that I knew of for mob grinding, like the grinder, that doesn't produce XP, um, spikes, iron spikes from... Um, I don't want to say it wrong. What's that from? Extra utilities. Um, those don't produce, I mean, those give you items and stuff, but they don't give you XP. And XP really was what I was after, after all. So I thought, eh, let's just go for every mob. And this Cursed Earth is going to work pretty great. Um, I haven't quite decided how I'm going to get the mobs off. I might have a spawning layer, uh, maybe just a little wider than this or longer or something. And I'll use um, fans from extra utilities. Oh, fan. Oh, great. No, there's a ton of stuff. There you go. Or open blocks, excuse me, not extra utilities. Uh, fan from open blocks. 
Pretty easy recipe. Any slab, iron ingot, iron bar, gets you a fan. And uh, bows basically push everything and anything in its path. Uh, mobs, uh, entities, not blocks, but yeah, you get the drift. Um, so that'll push them off of there. And then from there, I think I will conveyor belt them to a central location. Uh, too wide, so uh, my turtles can handle that. Um, so yeah, I think they'll be in a too wide space. And I'll put both my turtles there, and then um, maybe vacuum hoppers to catch the atoms, and also to route the XP to my um, steel tank. So I'm not quite sure where I have this. Maybe I'll have the spawning platform here, push to here, and when they die, it'll be uh, it'll be routed around here into my uh, tank. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Almost sure of it. So I'm just going to sit here and harvest some cursed earth for a while. Oh, that's nice. kind of lights it up when I take away a block. Uh, let's take a little bit more. But anyways, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And I will be back when I'm ready. Alright, guys. I was going to uh, get started on my, um, <clears throat> my uh, cursed earth mob farm here. And I was looking for my builder's wand. And I put it in my knapsack last time, and now I see that it isn't there. And that this potion of regeneration, I had already drank a while ago to get ender pearls when I was farming them. And it's back there. And, yeah, I was I was kind of confused. I think it's part of the glitching that happened when I got multiples of turtles and stuff. Um, by the way, these are the turtles that I'm going to be using um, for the farm. Um, but yeah, so stuff was glitching out with my uh, knapsack. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain that it's the knapsack that was kind of causing these problems because every time it was my knapsack that like kind of doubled stuff, not my inventory or anything. So I figured uh, to try to st stave off any um, recurrences of this, I'm going to uh, change over to the backpack mods backpack. I'll probably just make one of these uh, big backpacks here. Um, Tan leather, which is leather with a bunch of string. I mean, it's kind of kind of a lot of string, but I've got a bunch of wool from that sheep farm I had, and I can just uh, ground that down to string. So just a heads up, that's what I'm going to be doing. It's not quite as convenient as having a nice little tab for your, it, but uh, I believe it does offer quite a bit more storage space than this anyways, and it most definitely will not glitch out. So yeah, uh, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to continue work on the mob farm, and hopefully I will be back when it is up and ready all right guys the uh the basis for my mob farm is done probably could have did this in creative single player or whatever but i just wanted to do it quick um I'm probably gonna add on to it it's not quite as fast as i thought it might be so quick dive in here to show you guys what's going on so we got some fans here we got the cursed earth let me get out of there before i start getting mangled by mobs so anyways the, the mob spawn fans push them over here uh, these two turtles are running an XP program that basically just um, constantly runs. It's, it's called, I've been named it Startup, so it'll start right on Startup. And if you see there, you saw that glow for a second. Um, that's the XP going. So uh, the turtles um, attack the mobs when they fall down. And the uh, I have a vacuum up here. I kind of had to get it closer. Originally, I had it just right here, but it wasn't quite close enough to uh, get the XP properly. So I just put it right there. Items go down here. I'll probably switch that over to a Tesseract eventually, but right now I just kind of want to see what I'm getting for drops. And um, XP is routed out through this side and just kind of goes up and over into my, excuse me, tank. So it seems to be working. Um, like I said, not nearly as efficiently as I hoped. Probably because I just made it so small. Um, I wanted to keep it uh, too wide just because um, I only had two turtles and I didn't really want to use conveyor belts to push them to a central location. But I think what I might do is have a wing out this way, um, coming over here, and, um, or no, actually what I might do, now that I think about it, is maybe just have another layer on top of this one that the mobs, say they spawn up in here, they get pushed and they get filtered down into this one, this one pushes them over there, and they fall down. So I might add that. I might add 
I doubt I'll do it, but I might add a layer off to the left here and off to the right. Or actually, now that I think about it, this is what I'll probably wind up doing. So I'll have a little hole here right in front of the fans. Um, and then I will uh, have that hole go off about two blocks. And then from there, I'll branch out uh, down that way towards the woods, over this way towards my cursed earth farm. And then one branch over this way towards uh, this way. Anyways, <laughs> um, either that or I might just stack another one of this exact thing on top of here. So I might have another layer of cursed earth and um, two more fans and they just drop down this same central shaft here. But um, then I kind of have to start worrying about uh, if they will die from height. You know, just death on instant fall, in which case uh, I wouldn't get any experience from them. So I think I'll probably just wind up going the way I said with uh, them dropping into this chamber from like three, uh, three routes or three more paths. And then they all get filtered down to here and eventually killed by my turtles. And yeah, so that's working pretty good. I might uh, put a wall in front of this turtle just because I don't really need to see it. And uh, when I have magnet mode on, it really kind of messes with the uh, pickups, and I don't want to be, just be collecting random uh, bones and zombie flesh just walking around here and chanting stuff. So I might wind up, uh, like I said, just putting a wall over here, block it off. Maybe I'll just put a section of clear glass all the way around here. So, yeah. Well, anyways, I'm going to be working on that for a little bit, and uh, I'll be back to show it off when I'm uh, done. All right, guys, so you can see here that I added another shaft on to this uh, structure here so there's cursed earth and fans and whatnot in there and they fall down and get pushed all the way to these turtles again and um, you can see I'm getting up quite a bit of drops so this was after I don't know several hours I went to work you all and left this on and um, kind of sucked I took out all the sort of good enchanted stuff pretty much anything with unbreaking, unbreaking two on it and I was going to get the enchantments off of there and combine them to get like a bunch of Unbreaking 3 books just because I can. But um, so I took all the uh, good enchantment items out into my inventory. And then I think I was still in the chest like this and the good enchanted stuff was in here. And then my computer just took a giant steaming dump on me and decided that it wanted to crash. So it just like hard crashed. There was no way I could get back. So I had to just... You know, do the whole hold down the power button thing, which I really re not re I don't regret it because I had to do it, but it sucked to do it. Anyways, when I came back, of course, all of the enchanted stuff was gone from my inventory and the chest. So I'm not going to try to, like, correct that or anything. Like, that happens, so big whoop to do some enchantments. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I'm getting quite a lot of stuff, and uh, probably at the end of this episode or so, I'll make some sort of a sorting system for all this. Maybe just throw it right into my system. That'll probably be what I wind up doing. And yeah, as you can see, we're getting quite a bit of XP. Uh, when I started, I had like maybe 100,000. And so now we've got quite a bit more just from adding that onto our regular farm. So that's doing well. Um, and as you saw at the beginning of this video, with uh, kind of weird timing because I didn't know how long the episode was going to get to be. But um, I killed a wither. And got my nether star and after some debate about what I should use it for my first one I decided I'm gonna make a miniature black hole which is some uh, ender pearl dust and a nether star ender pearl dust it just comes from smelting an ender pearl so you make that and you put that in the middle of some iron obsidian and diamond to make a portal gun that's right so that I want to go ahead and make this portal gun just cuz um, it'll allow me to more easily like get myself from uh, like if I go on an adventure to a certain biome that I need or something, it'll just allow me to easily get back here. Um, now I also might do some fancy stuff with a uh, a portal spawner too. It does take another black hole, I believe. Let me find out. Yeah, these portal spawners take another black hole just because they pretty much, I mean, they can create portals, so that's why they require it, I suppose. But you know. As long as I uh, go back to my little wither farm and kill, or my wither skeleton farm and kill a few of them, it won't be too bad. And I, I it was kind of hard to tell with the wither effect on, 
but I'm pretty sure I wasted it with only a little bit of uh, um, hearts taken away. So that was all fine. So I might do something where even if I come into the situation where, like, say, you know, I have a portal here, and, you know, oh, I'm going to say wherever I go, all I have to do is shoot the orange portal, and um, I can get back. Uh, but what happens if, you know, you're accidentally walking around, oh, i got to shoot the blue portal. Oh, oh, crap, you know. So it's nice to be able, to, from wherever you are, know that you're going to be able to get back as long as you have a portal gun. And you can hook that up with some fancy uh, redstone and uh, those portal spawners. So I might do that later. And I also might get one to um, to make an unbreakable pickaxe from uh, Tinker's Construct. And if I do decide to do that, I'll show you guys exactly how that's done. Because it's a really neat feature. It's totally legitimate. It's not like a glitch or anything. Um, in Tinker's Construct, if you have uh, another star to add additional modifiers to your tool, you can fairly easily make a um, unbreakable uh, pickaxe and with some it's it's got decent speed on it it's not too bad and all you need is quite a lot of obsidian but that's pretty easy if you're as far as getting another star so that's about where we're at um, as of right now I'm just processing ores um, that I got for my turtles I'm letting that run as you saw I might go kill another wither in fact you know what why don't we just do that right now I've got my inventory sorted I put all my good stuff that I thought I might lose in this chest here. So since we're, we've got all this stuff on us yet, why don't we just take this and go kill another wither. Um, what do I need? Four soul sand? Yep. Uh, I really wish I had those boots right about now. Got that, got that. Get some regen and strength. Probably put this newly crafted portal gun away just in case. And we should be good to go. I really like fighting him on top of the nether. Usually I fight him just like a ravine I find or something. This is kind of nice, you know? You don't got to worry about anything spawning unless you put blocks up here. But I don't want him to destroy that spawner. That would be awful. So, use this. One, two, three. Drink my strength. Oh shoot. Here we go. Oh yeah. I wasted him. Look at that. I'm only down one heart. I didn't really show that because I, I guess I assume most people knew it, but um, in case you didn't know, um, you can craft these heart canisters from Tinker's Construct and you can get a permanent health increase as you see by my yellowish hearts down at the bottom there. I'll just quick show you how to craft them. Um, you need a necrotic bone which are rare drops from uh, wither skeletons. Which, uh, same with miniature red hearts but I believe you can get those from any mob. Uh, it's just a rare drop. Jeweled apple, um, pretty expensive, four diamonds. And then a uh, empty canister which is just four aluminum. So, I mean, it's kind of expensive. Quite a few diamonds that I used making all those. But, um, I'll probably wind up getting up to 10, which is the max. So you pretty much have two full life bars. And, uh, by the way, I think that's just a graphical glitch when I'm going between dimensions. Uh, but you can fix that by taking it out and putting it back in. And then it should... <laughs> Usually that works, I should say. There we go. Now it's back. Anyways, so now we have another nether, an, another nether, another nether star. Um, so what are we going to use that for is the question. Do I want that portable spawner or do I want a unbreakable pickaxe but it wouldn't have any luck on it? Hmm. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to decide and... Actually, I think I already decided. Um, so I was thinking and I was like, okay, well, I don't do any of my own mining anymore. So what's the point? So I guess I will um, do what I said I was going to do. Make this portal, portal spawner. And then I'll um, get everything I need to wire it up. Hopefully. I guess I don't know if the mod I need is even in this pack. But um, we'll see how it goes. We'll make it happen one way or another. And uh, I'll come back when I'm ready to share that with you guys.
And through some movie magic, it is done. Here's my uh, little makeshift portal spawner here. So uh, it just looks like that when you place it on a wall. It's automatically too high. And you get two from crafting it, so I have another one. Not sure what I'll really use that for yet. But uh, there it is. Even when you right-click it, you can have a few options, what colors you want the portal to be and what you want the redstone to react to. And here is uh, how this is all going to work. Um, so I made this remote and I made this wireless receiver. And if I just do wireless redstone, you can see here there's a few things from wireless redstone um, add-ons. Uh, I use the remote and the wireless receiver. So the wireless receiver, ah, wireless receiver basically receives signals wirelessly, whether it's from a transmitter or from your remote. So uh, these things are pretty simple to craft. I'll, I'm not, I don't want to bore you guys with the recipes, but um, just requires some obsidian and some ender pearls, glowstone and redstone, and then some stone uh, to craft some other components of it. And then when you right click it, um, you'll just see this first of all. Um, you set the frequency, so basically um, what uh, channel you want this to interact with. And I just picked 10. You can pick any number you want, and if um, it, it shouldn't get too complicated. I mean, you can have quite a range of uh, different uh, channels for different kinds of things. But if you go to advanced, you can name frequencies and, uh, ooh, I guess, color it maybe? I don't know. Anyways, you can name different frequencies and... Um, so you can remember them easier but I'm just I just have this for now so I just thought 10 that'd be easy and if you have the remote and shift right click you get the same kind of thing so these are both on 10 and I have this uh, portal spawner do you want it to close when the redstone power is cut and I said no um, simply because as soon as I let go of the remote of uh, powering it it would uh, go out and I don't want that so, say I'm adventuring into the woods or whatever, and I've got both my portals active, and I've been doing stuff with those, and I'm like, okay, you know what? I want to go home. Um, so I'll just use my remote. You can see the blue one disappeared. And so then wherever I am, I'll just shoot the orange one, hop in, and there we go. And you can see if I close the portals um, and use my remote again, you can see... Uh, the wireless transmitter should light up on this portion here, and then that powers the uh, portable spawner. So you can see it powered it there, turns it on, and it activates the blue portal. So I just got to remember that um, I shouldn't place the blue portal anywhere that I don't want to lose it accidentally. So, but yeah, that's how that works. And if you don't know the portal gun mod, which I'm sure most of you do, you can just walk through the portals, and uh, I believe. If you drop things through, yeah, they go through as well. Um, some other cool things that, actually more than even getting around that I wanted the portal gun for, is that they have the ability to move items. Let me throw something down a little more solid than this. Um, so if you, the default key is G, and if you're looking at something and you press G, you can carry it around like in the game portal. And then you find out where you want to set it, sometimes it's kind of hard. And they just kind of drop it on it. And apparently there's some sort of glitch with half slabs. Because it seems to be deleting them whenever I try to drop it on a half slab. So keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, you can move spawners. You can move um, all sorts of uh, tech equipment without losing its energy or configuration. Which is great for uh, short term or short length moving. Uh, you don't have to worry about... Um... Ooh, cool, I got to see my engine thing in action here and it reached below 10%. Anyways... Yeah, you don't have to worry about it uh, losing power, especially with like IC2 machines. Um, it's one of the few ways you can move them without uh, losing their power. Uh, thermal expansion, most things you can move without losing power, except for machines. If you want your machines to keep your power, you have to move them by other means rather than just uh, breaking them. But yeah, there's that. Uh, what else? There was one more thing. Oh yeah, I just upgraded my um, my little cobble useless cobble generator here. I um, got an energy tesseract that's uh, hooked up to my main energy over there uh, and that's powering this thermal expansion cyclic assemb assembler and basically put a schematic in it and my schematic says well I guess you can't see it but it's uh, telling it to make cobblestone in a 9x9 and it requires uh, 20 
uh, redstone flux per craft, which seems like a little bit a lot for something that just assembles stuff, but it does do it instantly, so that's cool. And you can also use fluids, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, I just I cut off all power to these. Looks like they're done uh, doing what they did. Yep, they're done making all their cobblestone. So now I'm just speeding it directly. So now the bottleneck is the uh, transfer node, which we could speed up if we want. But I don't want to use too much energy just making useless cobblestone. And actually, this auto workbench is having a somewhat of a difficult time keeping up. But not too bad. And we've got six quintuple compressed cobblestone. Almost seven. We're on our way to the step up. I think I just want to keep going until I have the biggest cobblestone ever. Or the, the most compressed, which is... What is the highest compressed cobble? Octuple? 43 million? Man, that's a lot of cobble. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sure we can find something cool for that. Display it on a bibliocraft something table or what have you. But I think that's about it for now. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do next. But I guess I will come back to you guys when I'm ready. Hey guys, sorry I didn't see how long the episode was running there. Sometimes I get a little ahead of myself. But uh, anyways, thank you guys for watching. Um, leave a comment down below if you liked anything. Tweet at me. The links are down below. But uh, thank you guys for watching. And remember, the cake is a lie.